All right, today we're, we're live. I want to first, uh, oh wow, Luis, I like your sunglasses. <laughs> I want to welcome um, everybody as today we're speaking about the future of architecture and landscape design and how the visionaries of Four Season Hotel and private residences, Fort Lauderdale masterfully designed a building that seamlessly integrates both indoor and outdoor living with specific focus on the importance of outdoor space today. We are, I want to first introduce everyone. We have Frederick. Uh, Frederick, you're in LA today, correct? That's correct. The sun is shining. How are you? Thank you so much for um, taking the time and joining us today. Thank you. I'm excited. We also have Kobe Carp. Um, Kobe, you're actually at the Fort Lauderdale Cell Center, correct? I am. Um, sunny uh, for a lot of day, overlooking the construction. Um, Coastal is already uh, six floors up in the air and uh, they have a beautiful view of the sandy beaches. And you have shaved. Yes, which is very important. And we have Luis Sunshine. Luis, you're also in Miami too, correct? Yes, I'm in Bell Harbor and there's so much sun here. I had to put on my glasses. <laughs> Amazing. And we also have Fernando Wong. Uh, Fernando, where are you today? I'm great. I'm here in Miami for this meeting, and then I will be heading back home to Palm Beach. Amazing. So, Kobe, I'd like to start out with you. You're the founder and principal of Kobe Carp Architecture and Interior Design. You founded the firm in 1996 and have since changed the landscape of the city of Miami and beyond, creating some of the most iconic structures. Your firm is known for providing creative and innovative design solutions to clients in hospitality, retail, and high-rise residential developments all around the world from the Caribbean all the way to the Middle, e the Middle East. Real quickly, as the architecture of Four Seasons Hotel and Private Residence is Fort Lauderdale, the second development you worked on with Forte Partners following the tremendous success of Four Seasons private residences at the Surf Club. What was your design philosophy and inspiration for this property? Well, uh, Seth, thank you, number one, uh, for your time in uh, bringing us all together. I think uh, bringing Luis and Frederic and Fernando, you have a very strong team here. Um, but the, the, the vision for the Four Seasons in Fort Lauderdale um, evolutionized really through the vision of Nadim and his fourth team. Um, you know, like Luis Sunshine always says, the opportunity in Fort Lauderdale with the intercoastal, with the beach, with the boat shows that we have here, the multi-million and the multi-billion dollar individuals who reside here and, and thrive here on an ongoing basis, it is really a unique and special destination. And this whole block, that I have been blessed to work with Fernando upon because he was able to bring the indoors and the outdoors together in and really create a pleasant and symbiotic relationship. He brought the landscaping as you will see and the lush tropical into the amenity areas of the hotel and the residences. He, we have beautiful spaces that open up to the street. You don't see a car. You have a separate entry, which is multi-level for the residences, and it's welcoming off of a private destination overlooking the ocean that is the whole block. The whole block is essentially linear gardens and plazas that allow you to walk and experience the hotel 360 degrees. There is no back to it. You have beautiful facades to the ocean and you have beautiful facades to the bay. You have beautiful tropical multi-level landscaping right here on A1A. Gorgeous, stunning. And as the building tapers back, and you can see it behind me, it comes to a beautiful amenity area for the hotel. And as it continues to pinnacle to the top, you have essentially, you know, as Frederick mentioned before, a, a floating sky house. It is a park plaza on top of a cupola of this building that continuously ascends up in the air. 
this is a very unique building that allows you to experience the beach and the sunrise in the bay with its gorgeous sunsets, 360 degrees all the way around. And that is an opportunity that when Nadine presented, came like a wow. This is for us in Fort Lauderdale with what is going on with other locations here, whether it's Las Olas, the river, um, Victoria Park, the arts and the performing center is here. Downtown Miami is a few blocks away and you are living at the lap of luxury on the sandy beaches of this tropical indoor outdoor haven. And tell us, um, you were showing us a, your book before. Tell, I mean, congratulations. I mean, we uh, started Hope Living 16 years ago, and we've watched you just build and grow and accomplish so much. Tell us a little about your book and your publisher, too. So I was introduced to Asulin um, through my son, who knows the son, and Asulin has been also brought uh, aboard because of Luisa's relationships and her ongoing relationships in New York. And they have been an integral part of the surf club um, while we were restoring and preserving the beautiful Russell Penko's um, building, which we brought back to life and is really the point of arrival and departure as you arrive at that hotel. Um, so Asuline um, was um, uh, gracious enough to work with us on the book and to really help us bring our history of hospitality and lifestyle here um, in Florida and throughout the world from uh, the Far East to the Middle East, uh, from South and Central America, and really put it in a nice uh, chronological and editorial and photographic um, collection, which is really unique because it shows the tropical modern architecture of Florida the Caribbean and the rest of the world. So I'm really honored uh, to work with that family. And I feel uh, that they, I'm blessed to have on part of the Nadim family um, and, 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 and be part of this team uh, that um, Luis brought on board. I'm really uh, feel uh, special and blessed about that. Do you mind showing us the book? It's very impressive. Um, yeah, you can go on asoline.com. This is the book. It has, um, I'll, I'll show you some images that are really relevant uh, maybe to us uh, more so than ever before, but it shows you um, things like tropical resorts in the Caribbean and Honduras. Um, I should stand up and I should be like Vanna White, you know, it should be <laughs> a more pleasant uh, sort of experience of historic preservation and restoration of uh, new and um, a existing buildings and it's kind of a collage in a collection of buildings ah this is actually um the historic uh surf club right in uh surfside this is the main entry um this is me when i used to be tall slender and good looking like frederick but you know <laughs> uh, but you can see the collection here and it's really an interesting collection of architecture and history um, of uh, Florida. So, but I will um, make sure that um, Jordan uh, sends it to you, Seth, and um, I'd love to share it with you. And we have a question from a panel uh, from someone asking, what is the name of your book? What's it called? It's just labeled simply Kobe Carp. If you go on asuline.com, um, they have it there. Um, and, it's, and it's for anybody to buy. Thank you. So, Fernando, you're known as one of the country's most influential landscape designers, and you're one of the design visionaries behind Four Seasons Private Residences Fort Lauderdale. As the owner of Fernando Wong Outdoor Living Design, you've specialized in both residential and commercial work with signature properties in Surfside, Palm Beach, and the Hamptons. Um, oftentimes, as a landscape designer, you are tasked with bridging the gap between the architecture Oops, sorry about that. Your 
my apologies, you're uh, between the architecture design of a building and the floor of the natural landscape that surrounds it. Fernando, this is the second development you worked with Kobe. Tell us more about this experience and what was your biggest source of inspiration for the project? Um, well, hello everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm being honored to be part of this project. Thanks to uh, Nadim and Full Partners. It is our second project uh, that we've been working uh, with experience at the Surf Club. Now, the site for this particular project, the, the Four Seasons for Lauderdale, is um, the site. It's all about the site. Uh, you can easily notice how the horizon open up to these wonderful vistas of the ocean, the boardwalk, the beach, A1A, and all of these areas are um, correlated to how the building also tapers to themselves and actually sits back allowing more sunlight to seep through um, the building. That allows us to um, have a beautiful garden. And the idea behind this um, garden was to create a sense of a shelter from a day that you might spend on the beach. Uh, it really invites you over. And then at the lobby, you will be able to experience the, the gardens, and if you're hungry, you can experience the restaurant. And if you are one of the privileged people who get to enjoy the Four Seasons, uh, you can go up to the pool terrace and enjoy a cocktail while you can enjoy yourself in the pools, the two pools that we have, and surround yourself with a wonderful service. So that is in some ways uh, the concept for this um, property. I love, um, I love the way you designed it with all the green and the beautiful um, yeah. the landscaping is just magnificent. It's really special. I, I tell you, I've known Fernando now for a few years and it's such a pleasure to work with him and his team. They're so professional. They are so elegant. They listen and they think outside of the box. The exterior spaces in this project are phenomenal. They're luxurious, they are emotional, they're sensitive, and they are so important to create the, the design that inherently is the lifestyle of luxury, barefoot elegance that we so desperately desire and need to have that does not exist in Fort Lauderdale. And that's what the Fort Group with Four Seasons together is bringing here. And that is such a unique experience that cannot be replicated. And Fernando in this specific project is an integral chamber for us because the architecture is a backdrop to the environment. The architecture is a backdrop to the gardens and the landscaping. If you go back to the site plan that you had a couple of minutes before, you will see how he treated so graciously and so eloquent, that's it, and so eloquently, the footprint. You can see the whole block coming to life with landscaping and lush tropical shade elements that create private drop-offs for the hotel, for the residences, and a point of approach along the ocean with a corner of a whole garden. And that garden is three-dimensional it flows up onto the building. So the building is nestled on this landscape stage set, which I find to be very unique and special treatment that Fernando did here. And again, I think that the way the building meets the ground, because there's no garage, all of the parking is below grade. And this is a unique and special design that is sustainable and it's resilient and it's environmentally correct. But more so, it is so pedestrian neighborhood friendly that the city just said, thank you so much. And everybody, the mayor and the commissioners, they all loved it. And I think that this kind of treatment that Fernando did with his team is second to none. This is an opportunity that came about and he was really let go. When you look at how Nadim and his team let us go on this, 
it really will reflect back over time as a unique architectural statement that is really honored by the landscaping and the greenery that is surrounding it. Fernando, well, working together with Kobe on designing this development, what were some of the challenges, but also opportunities that you saw that made it unique to anything else you've designed before? I mean, it's a very unique property. Um, like I mentioned before, the site dictates pretty much how we were going to approach the layering of different stages. How we managed to do that was by means of staircase, ramps, and plateau sections in between. All of these areas were concealed with landscaping at ground level. Past that level, we use uh, trees as well as canopy that actually are going to create a beautiful role as the day goes by and then the, the afternoon and the evening as the sun goes down, the beach is always kind of dark. So the whole landscape is going to come and create a view at night. The gardens are going to be illuminated in such a de delicate and elegant way. And if you happen to experience the terrace of the pool, you will be able to notice how the rustles of the fronds of all of the palm trees at ground level you could hear them, you can feel the breeze, you can then interact visually with the wave while sitting up high and having all of your cocktails and your day at the pool or your spa treatment. So it's really, really nice to be able to enjoy nature and being catered to uh, by the Four Seasons. And what sticks in my mind is that Nadim Ashi always said that he wanted this pool deck to feel like you were in the south of France and that you were just relating to the ocean. You were just, you were, you were in your own special world there. And I think that has turned out to be true. And, and oh. Luis, Luis is 100% right. I'm sorry to jump in because no. the, the vision that Nadine had and the ability to carve the building back and terrace it back and really create the landscaping amenities, not only at the street level and not only at the amenities level, right? But then to bring it to the cupola, to the top of the um, building in this very special space um, of this penthouse, which is really um, a sky house. And it's a multi-level indoor outdoor experience that does not exist anywhere. We don't have that in Miami and or Fort Lauderdale. And you will be floating on top of the building from the bay to the beach. And you will have an opportunity really, not only to experience the space 360, sunrise to sunset, but you really have this elegant landscaped interior outdoor designs that were created um, by Fernando. And those kind of experiences allow us as architects, as interior designers with Terra, to really create a unique opportunity um, that is so in tune with the environment, um, whether the clouds roll in with the rains or whether the sun rises, and each sunset is completely different and it's a celebration of life on a daily basis. To experience it truly, you must be part of the environment. And that's what I think Fernando was very successful and Tara is very successful by pulling the materials and the finishes inside in an elegant fashion that really complement the architecture, I think, and celebrates it. Was there any challenges um, getting Fernando's vision in the property as you were doing the architecture, Kobe? Yes, I think that um, Fernando's desires and demands, um, whether it's the mature trees and or the specimen that he was looking at, um, created opportunities. Um, you know, normally we do planters and boxes. Here we really carved them out as free flowing forms, right, Fernando, that really bring in a three dimensionality that hides it all. So you don't feel the, the volumes or the concrete, but 
the planters and the landscaping disappear away in a three-dimensional way, they let you walk upon it. So whether you want to walk with your dog or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your kid, you have that ability and you feel like you're part of a very tropical three-dimensional garden. And that is an experience um, that is very eloquent and very special that does not exist. And I think that is what makes the Four Seasons in Fort Lauderdale um, so unique and special. Fernando, as a landscape designer, um, how did you in integrate with the building's features to make the spaces feel luxurious, but also private, complementing the architecture design in every way? Tell us a little about that. In terms of, I, I just follow a lot of cues by what the architects, the architecture dictates. So um, if you notice the lobby and the restaurant areas, there are walls of glass. So by the pure nature of that transparency, you will be able to, at moments, be able to see the ocean. You'll be able to see the canopy of the trees, the canopies of the palms. And when you look down at the um, uh, garden, then you, before you ever see any concrete or any asphalt or any pavement, you'll be surrounded by greenery. So that is not only happens uh, in the courtyard, but throughout the entire building. And that same concept was taken all the way up to the pool deck, as well as the penthouse. So Luis, as a pioneer of development sales and marketing, you're also the strategic advisor for the developer. With your help, Four Seasons Fort Lauderdale has seen sales surpass 2,000 a square foot, a record for the condominium market in the city of Fort Lauderdale. First of all, congratulations, because that's a huge number for Fort Lauderdale. Thank you. I think we have a very good sales team led by Dan Texera, and I'm very proud of the job they've done. And, but I think that the building is very special and we must remember that it is made more special by the services that are offered by the Four Seasons Hotel. And in today's world, there is a great flight to uh, single family homes. Uh, the market is just flooded with buyers who want to buy single family homes. And at the Four Seasons, private residences, we are offering the nearest thing to a single family home because the layouts are very, very gracious. And the fact that you have this ability to live indoors and outdoors and have, in essence, your own backyard is a very appealing thing. And uh, Fernando has graciously uh, offered to do a landscaping plan for all the residences above the 18th floor, which have these very, very, very large uh, terraces. And he has offered to very graciously give his services and his site. So a buyer, an owner of these residences can actually know what to do with these spaces, these outdoor spaces, because they're so generously proportioned and you know, you just can't stick a palm tree in a pot somewhere. Uh, it, it, they have to be really well thought out. And Fernando is now creating a landscaping plan for each one of these residences in addition to rethinking the landscaping plan for the penthouse. So our $35 million penthouse has a rooftop park. And I don't think there is any other, any other penthouse with a rooftop park. And this rooftop park has two swimming pools, a jogging track, a golf, you know, a miniature three hole golf course. Uh, I mean, it has every single activity that you can possibly think of. And 
I think Fernando is going to come up with an incredible landscaping plan that will incorporate all of these features. I under oh, Luis, I also understand that there were some recent changes in the building, specifically in the integration of the indoor outdoor living spaces. Can you and Kobe walk us through some of these changes and include how you feel they'll add um, for the value of the residents of the Four Seasons of Fort Lauderdale? Love to hear them and from you and Kobe. Okay, well, as far as I'm concerned, most of these changes were made to the penthouse because before the penthouse only had one swimming pool, now it has two swimming pools. I mean, the changes were made to the outdoor space on the penthouse and where else, Kobe? I think, I think that Luis is right. What happened is that as the building evolutionized and the sales seem to be quite strong, um, I think that the valuation, and that's why you have people like Frederick involved in this, is that the vision of the penthouse as, as a, a house in the sky is really becoming an interesting destination um, because it cannot be replicated. And so pulling in Fernando and pulling in Tara and pulling in Luis and Frederick and having us look at it um, really gave an opportunity to create a unique space indoor and outdoor that is really speaking volume because once this space is gone, it cannot be replicated. So it's a very unique experience because here in Fort Lauderdale, we have such a nice demand for people who want to experience the multi-million dollar yachts. They want to experience the art and the culture that exists here. And they are coming here in droves. And really at the end of the day, this building is not big. It's quite petite. And at the end of the day, you just have one cupola on top that one individual and or family or couple will end up with. And so the, the supply is very limited. And that's when Nadine and Luis, um, you know, brought Fernando and us in with Tara to really create, take it to another level. Because when they saw the sales, and how they're proceeding here, and, and the demand that, exi that exists at, they said, we have an opportunity to really look at this in a different fashion. And that's why Luis is mentioning, we went you know, from one sunrise to a sunset outdoor space, maybe a putting green, maybe there is an opportunity to create an outdoor um, sunrise and an outdoor sunset, maybe there is a shaded um, solarium area. And all of those is what Fernando has been, I think, so eloquent in, in creating the outdoor spaces. So the value that is being created between the inside and the outside um, just multiplies exponentially. I will say that for the past five months, we've all, all of us have spent a lot more time in our homes. And we, as a result of that, have given a lot more thought to how people live. And if you're going to spend a lot more time in your homes, what kind of space do you need? Do you need a media room? Do you need your own gym within your home? Do you need a larger kitchen, not just a strip kitchen? Do you need, what are these spaces? And, and the outdoors is a very, very important part of that. People want to get out of their homes, but you know, where did they go? So they go out on their terraces or their, let's say into their backyards. And um, the good news is that Ford Partners is very adaptable, flexible, willing to listen and willing to um, change as we go along because life has really gone through some very dramatic changes. And 
our design is adapting to those changes. And the architects are totally involved in that process. I want to go to Frederick um, and talk about, obviously, or focus a little bit on the magnificent crown jewel of the building, the $35 million penthouse mm -hmm. uh, that Louise talked about. And we also talked about on our webinar, um, which we featured you and Louise last month. Um, the penthouse is $35 million. You and your which was Which was your most viewed uh, sure. live session ever? Well, this is going to be the second most viewed, so... <laughs> But you and your team have the exclusive listing on this remarkable penthouse. Can you tell us from your extensive experience in real estate sales, how the new features of this penthouse add value that Kobe and Luis were talking about? Yeah, I mean, I think um, a lot of what I wanted to say, my dear other three panelists uh, already said, because uh, I'm coming last. So a lot of the features have been pointed out, but I will go on the record because I think it's important from my perspective to say that to anyone listening to this, this is arguably one of the top three penthouses in the United States, maybe in the world. And if this penthouse would ever be located in a city like New York or LA, which doesn't have, they don't have even beaches like Fort Lauderdale, this penthouse would be somewhere between 100 and $200 million. Something like this will never come back. Like Kobe said, it can't be replicated. And, just the, the sheer size of it, over 20,000 square feet, and almost half of that is outdoor space and beautifully integrated outdoor space, which is the, the point of this discussion. You, you know, I have to say as an evolution of new development or evolution of these iconic buildings, an evolution of, of, of architecture in general is exactly where, you know, this conversation started today, where uh, Kobe and Fernandi are working together. You know, outdoor spaces, even in a penthouse like this, used to be sort of a side note when we developed these buildings. And it used to be something that the architect sort of left over at the end and then they added plants. In this project, and we'll see more of this in the future, in the future, the architect and the interior, sorry, the exterior landscape architect are working closely together and they develop the building together. And that's, uh, you, can, you can really see this in these renderings that are being shown right now. There's this very, very seamless. And everybody says they have seamless indoor outdoor, outdoor living, but this building really does have it. Um, and you know, what we, what we added was a second pool. And I think everybody, it's obvious. I mean, I can't think of any other penthouse that have two outdoor swimming pools. One, you can watch the sunrise. The other pool, transitioning to, you can watch the sunset. And you know, that's the biggest bragging right in the world, right? I have two outdoor swimming pools. Um, and I think in this new sort of COVID post, whatever period we're in now, um, this is what people want. They wanna be outdoor. They wanna slide the doors open, but they wanna have fresh air. They wanna have one pool for the guests, maybe a private pool. Uh, they, it's just the end, the endless possibilities here. And the last thing I'll say, which Fernando brought up, which I think is super, super important. Some of, a lot of developments and a lot of penthouses and building in general, they're developed for like a daytime setting. And then you, you they let the owners, the future owners of these residences come in and add outdoor lighting and, and garden lighting for the, for the night. And here, this has already been thought of. This has already been thought taken care of and the entire project, especially this penthouse, is sort of glow at night. And we spend a lot of time at home at night. Um, and then there's the privacy. You have the private elevator. You never have to see anybody. If you live in the penthouse, if you don't want to, it's obviously, um, if you're scared of germs, you know, that's the way to do it. And you're the master of the universe really up there. Um, I'm really proud to be working on it. Um, a half joke maybe, you know, um, Luis and Kobe are like the king and queen of Florida. Um, when you're down in Miami, specifically look at every single project, Kobe's name is on it. He's incredibly talented. And I think, you know, his book is just congrats. Um, that's when you really made it in life, when you have a Celine book. Um, and, you know, um, Luis and I go way back and um, I learn every single day from her. And Fernando too, I have so much respect. I mean, this is the future. Outdoor, um, outdoor landscaping and the integration into your living room and bedroom, that's top priority for buyers, especially the wealthy. And why do you feel its design is so appealing to buyers? 
specific well, high net worth, you know, client that's going to buy that $35 million penthouse? Because it's so large uh, without being overwhelming. You know, during this process, we also made the, the master suite double the size. Luis and I made that decision with the developer who, like she said, they really listen. We made it twice the size. Uh, we added a second pool. We added private, privacy. Uh, we added more outdoor um, landscaping. It, it just checks every single solitary box. And I think what, uh, what we should never forget and what we should repeat over and over and over in discussions like this is the connection to the Four Seasons. You have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people working for you below in the building. And anything that you want at any given time, you can have with a text message or a call on your phone. And uh, they're there to serve you. And then the connection to the beach, connection to the yachts, connection to the international airport that's actually becoming really amazing. And the flights are being added, well, not right now, but will be added. And it's, uh, I think Fort Lauderdale, I don't think until recently, uh, there's wealthy people, but it hasn't been considered to be like an A plus city in that sense for billionaires and even wealthier people than that, but it really has lately. And the, the building itself, of course, with the proven track record and those signed contracts have shown that. I think to me, 35, and I'll go on record say that, it's actually a really, really the price should be higher. I mean, for, for that kind of square footage, 20,000 square foot plus, up in the sky, completely private with a private entrance, it's a really good price. And somebody like Colby said, one family is going to be very happy. So, Fernando, I'd like to ask you because I know that you will be redesigning the entire landscaping for that penthouse because right now it's just a renderer's dream. What do you have in mind? Well, I think that depending on the buyer, uh, I think that we're quite equipped to cater to his needs. I think that Kobe have done a beautiful design with the buildings uh, in general. So uh, with all of the things that are probably are gonna be happening already and you can physically see as the building goes up, um, a potential buyer have the confidence that Kobe can actually uh, cater to all of his needs, not only the pool, like, like the two pools, but also the, the track around the apartment will be a significant item for health and for people who are concerned about um, keeping and staying healthy. Um, I think that uh, Frederick mentioned that the price for these penthouses truly is, is considerably low for what the amount of square footage you're going to have. So with that said, I think that with you, Luis, we are in good hands and with Frederick, we will be able to find a, a wonderful buyer for this house in the sky. Well, in essence, Seth, the, the purchaser of this penthouse will have Fernando as their landscape architect, and they will be able to contribute their own thoughts and their own input into the landscape design, which is what I think Fred, uh, Fernando is saying, which, which is a really good thing because all purchasers on that level want to have some input into the design. Well, we always have fun when we do webinars uh, with Luis and Frederick. So Frederick, we're going to play a game. I'm going to let you take over and you'll with your team. Yes, we, we love games. Um, so <laughs> we're going to visualize that we all live in the penthouse together. No, um, let's say I. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Say hold I, on. Hold on there, Fred. I like that thought process. Hold on. I, 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 I buy it, let's say. Good. And It's a good start. I, you know, my, my twins birthday uh, is coming up, which it is, they're turning three this fall. And I have this incredible, the best pentas in the world, arguably with the best brand hotel underneath that can help me do anything. So I'm asking my dear friends, you three to help me with this birthday party. So Kobe, let's start with you. Cause I'm delegating here. I need help with the food. We have about a hundred, we had about a hundred guests coming. A lot of them are going to be kids. We obviously have 
I don't over 10,000 square feet on top and the kids are going to have fun. But what do we, what, what would you do here? Well, what I would do? Yeah. I would take, I would bring sand from the beach and Ooh. I would sprinkle it all over your floor. Ooh. And then what I would do is I would put um, little pails for the kids to play in little sandbox and turn it all into an indoor outdoor space like Fernando intends it to be. And I would take it on steroids and bring it inside. I would fill the tub with little floating um, duckies. I would fill the other tub with sand. I would go in there and I would make it into a three-dimensional haven. I would do little swings there and stretch little coconut trees with little hammocks in between. So you and can- it, sorry, And just to stop you there, it sounds like a lot of work, but I think the idea is for people to understand that when you say I would do, you're saying to call down to you know the, the hotel to do all of this for you, right? Oh, yes. Fernando yeah, yeah. is a friend who lives here in Fort Lauderdale. They'll, they'll come in, they'll do the whole setup, and then they'll take it all away whenever you finish. And then uh, the, the bar, there'll be actually a little margarita bar where you can sit down and have your tequila and margaritas. So the adults are in one place and the kids can play in another place. And the whole indoor, outdoor 20,000 square feet becomes a beautiful um, rooftop, like you said, um, park and beach. Yeah, and you would cater you would cater the food from downstairs. I'm assuming with you know you have a lot of variety there, and, and you know on that note, anytime you want room service, it sounds like our dedicated beach butlers, Four Seasons Beach Butlers, will have will be very busy at your twins' birthday party. Okay, so that's good. So let's let's go to to you, Louise. What would you add on with decorations, and what would you do? Uh, differently maybe than Kobe. I mean, the beach, I love that idea and it's actually doable and God, the kids would love it. <laughs> well, I'm not as uh, frivolous as Kobe. I'm oh, more yes, you are. I was watching Studio 54, Louis. <laughs> and then all the way there, I saw Mr. Rubel <laughs> showing his little guest list. And guess whose name was on there? Louis Sunshine Plus Two. Not one, two, Louis. <laughs> So I'd be more conservative, but I would absolutely call the concierge and meet with, I would meet with all of the resources that were available to me at the hotel. And uh, I mean, we would probably have balloons. I mean, we would probably have uh, maybe little teepee tents for the kids to go in. We, we, I would probably put dolphins in the pool instead of duckies. Um, I like that. Now you're thinking. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes here. It's recorded. This whole thing is recorded. We got it, Frederick. Uh, we, would, we would, you know, there's an outdoor kitchen, which uh, has been designed. We would use that and we would make hamburgers and hot dogs and we would use that outdoor kitchen and make everything that kids like to eat. Uh, I love that. I, I love that idea. We just got another idea while you're talking from one of the people watching this live. And uh, she's saying that she would also hire face painters or the hotel would set it all up so the kids can get their, you know, butterflies and hearts and, and, and paint, uh, which my kids love. But I think that to just to, to underline what you both are saying what's so wonderful about having the hotel is it's the four seasons and that lifestyle those services are priceless you know we all know not only kids but if you're creating a you're, you're arranging any kind of event or dinner or wedding you know it's 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 life it sucks the life out of you and here you have the hotel and seamlessly everything including even um you know cleaning after um, Fernando, what, what, what we have this great thing called the kids for all seasons room. They can bring up those machines, the you know the pinball machines, the, all the things that kids play with. The hotel yeah. owns in this uh, accommodation, and they can loan it to the party. Uh, and I think the kids would love it. 
I think so too. And to have your own park, you know, I mean, kids are loud and they take a lot of space. So to just put them all up there on the roof, a hundred of them would be amazing. Fernando, do you want to add something what you, what you think you would change this? I mean, it sounds like it's starting to be a fun party. I feel like I feel really good about this, this birthday party now when I have help from you guys. <laughs> well, sand and the apartment, ugh. <laughs> no, you can never get it out. So I decided that we are going to rent a beautiful yacht, park Ooh. it in front of the hotel. Yes. In honor of my previous life of athlete, I will do a lot of water activities, relay, and, and I will probably also do the barbecue in the boat. <laughs> I'm getting really tired, so we'll, they go back home. They will be so tired that they will just go to bed. <laughs> But I love this idea because you, usually this is like a it's like a, a, a dream and it's not but here you can actually do all of this. The hotel has can get you the boat easily and you can just get all those kids on it. Well, I get them really tired. They go to sleep soon. Your, your twins are absolutely beautiful. Thank you. They are. Well, that was a lot of fun. Um, what I do want to do is Kobe is so gracious as he's um, giving five. Um, signed copies of the new book to winners for people that um, brought the best questions. We have a lot of questions I would like to ask. So if I do call your question and your name, feel free to email us afterwards um, to pick up the signed book at the Fort La at the Four Seasons Fort Lauderdale uh, Sales Center. We'll give you the information. Um, one of the persons that I would like, uh, it's a great question, and it's for... Um, Frederick, it's for Edward Sabag. Oh. And it's, what's your biggest accomplishment of your life so far? I mean, everyone here are all stars and have built successful careers. But Frederick, what, in your opinion, is your biggest accomplishment of your life so far? It's actually very easy to answer because it's my kids. You know, um, my husband and I, we tried for so many years and nothing happened. We couldn't figure out why. So... That was a joke. Everybody looks so serious. Um, we, we, uh, <laughs> we, uh, I feel like we had to go through this process. I'm very grateful that we did and just looking at them and, and loving them and, and, and having grown so much from being a father. I think anybody who's uh, a parent on this, on this call or this conference will agree that, you know, business is amazing. Business has actually been better than it's ever, it's ever been this year, despite, um, the very strange time we're living in, but nothing will, nothing will, you know, be bigger than them for sure. Cindy Ferguson um, wanted to go back to Fernando and Kobe and say, can you go more in detail about the interior design? Can you talk a little bit more about the interior design elements of the property? So we're very blessed here. We have uh, Tara Bernard working with us on the interior design of the spaces. It's really, Martin Brzezinski is involved as well in the public spaces, and he's extremely, extremely, extremely talented. Um, he actually did uh, the restaurant also uh, space at the Four Seasons in the Surf Club. But Tara has really, you can see it in the images that I uh, shared before, they're just stunning. They blend the indoors and the outdoors, and they blend the outdoor furnishing with the indoor furnishing in a very barefoot, elegant, casual way. And it's just stunning. Um, I think it's really um, a, an opportunity to say that, um, like Frederick said, you're buying the whole indoor-outdoor space. It's not a space that is relegated to a pool or it's relegated to um, an outdoor. Each and every inch has been designed, curated, and and then Lori Kaufman uh, asked a great question for you, Fernando. Um, I don't know if you're able to give the secrets away, but what type of trees and plants are best for the beachfront environment? Well, uh, as part of the design, we have a series of um, coconuts and silver and green bottomwoods, uh, sea grapes. Those are coastal plantings. And I mean, I can go into more detail, but it's just a lot. <laughs> Luis, um, Amalia Spinelli Tamati asked, why partner with the Four Seasons? What makes Four Seasons uh, perfect? You've done two amazing properties um, in Florida with Four Seasons. 
Well, for the very simple reason that Four Seasons is the best hospitality brand in the market and Four Seasons creates value so that when somebody buys and this is, you know, you can prove this point. When you purchase a home at a Four Seasons property, undoubtedly, when you go to sell that home, your home is worth more money than you paid for it. And you cannot say that about very many other properties. Four Seasons creates a lot of value. Their services are incomparable. And their philosophy of hospitality is just very, very unusual. Everything is not enough. Kobe, I have a question for you uh, from Dubai. Um, Sohul Nazar said, you have designed several amazing projects in Florida. What do you consider a key ingredient in creating memorable residences for families, families, families flourishing? I, that's a very good question because I think that the lifestyle of the family, just like Frederick mentioned, is so important to be part of the home. Um, at the end of the day, um, to create a space that really functions both indoor and outdoor in a very unique and special way is what creates the value. And how the house or how the home sits on the site and how the spaces are relating to the outside. And it's not only the view and it's only the outdoor and it's not only the gardens or the tropical little niches with the fire pits. Um, and it's not only the prayer areas if I'm in the UAE, right? It's the question of how does the service come in and come out? How, does, how is the privacy treated? And that is really part of understanding what makes a special piece of architecture. When you look at the four seasons here in Fort Lauderdale, um, I was just talking to Dan before this um, started here. He says, Kobe, the building sits on a block and it's face, it has faces on all four sides. There's not a back to it. The parking is hidden away. And in any way you look at it, it looks good. It looks good on 360 degrees. And that's also what Frederick was mentioning is that when you come to your penthouse, to your, to your volume in the, in the sky, and your mansion in the sky basically is a 360 panorama um, space that the core is on the inside, but the spaces on the outside allow you to flow freely from the inside to the outside. And that is a unique design set that, you know, that, that's why people are calling you from Dubai um, and asking you these kind of questions. But I think you have to design them on a space by space, location, location. You know, when the Dean brought us here, you know, and we came up with the volume and the shape of the building and carved it out, again, it's a teamwork. It's a teamwork that then makes it easier for people like Luis to sell and promote and people like Frederic who can then understand the value of what a floating um, sky villa is about. And that is a unique opportunity that cannot and shall not uh, be replicated. Um, you know, too bad, so sad, but that's the reality of it all. And Kobe, wouldn't you agree that the value is created in the pre-development planning? It, when it, when the synergy is created between Tara, yourself, uh, Fernando, the developer, and all of these ideas are hashed out and fleshed out. And it's true. It, we love each other and we love working with each other. And that creates a symbiotic relationship that really flows together very, very well. And the proof is in the pudding. When you see the building starting now to come together and people start to go, oh, now I understand what the outdoor spaces will be like, they're starting to get excited. Um, renderings and plans are beautiful, but when people start to see the actual baby come to life, they really get excited. And what Luis said is so, so true. You know, um, putting the team together and putting this group together, you know, um, you know, Nadim, has people who are close to him, like his wife who love Fernando, right? And Fernando is loved um, by me. And this relationship really creates, I think a product in the end that is very, very saleable on an ongoing basis. 
And I think, look, people thought of Fort Lauderdale like they thought of Surfside when we first started, right? I mean, Fernando and I said, oh my God, Surfside. What is it to Bell? It's the armpit of Bell Harbor and the <laughs> of Miami Beach, right? But here you are celebrating and creating the crown jewel. And this crown jewel that, that you know, Frederick is, is promoting is really a unique opportunity. It's really, you know, tying it all together in Fort Lauderdale and celebrating the culture and the environment and the boat show and the yacht show and the international. He was just touching lightly about Emirates and, and all the other international airlines that are coming here now to Fort Lauderdale. And it's really, really, really becoming, you know, a uniquely cultural, civilized destination with very, very, very limited product. The next question is for Frederick and Luis. Uh, it's from Malik uh, Ben Masoud. And it says, in these unique circumstances, have you and your team modify your sales strategy, change the narrative due to the COVID situation in South Florida? Yeah, I mean, I think this is what we're doing right now. Uh, it's not changing so much the narrative, but how we do, how we sell and how we market a property like this has changed. I am embracing it. I actually, I'm enjoying it and I'm trying to see just how actually more effective this way is. Like, listen, if we were in normal times back in 2018 and 19, we might have all, I might have flown to, you know, Florida and we would have all sat together in a room with what can fit maybe 30 people. Now, as I understand it, we have hundreds and hundreds of people watching this and this is going to live on forever and it's, it's live and you can actually interact more and people from all over the world can do it instantly and free. And I think, you know, the technology is already here and what was happening what, what's happening now had already started pre-COVID you know the COVID is a catalyst of, 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 of these things so I, I, I actually I'm embracing it I'm enjoying it now how we change the penthouse you know I feel like the penthouse and I'm not trying to brag because I, I can't take responsibility for the program of the penthouse that far back but I think it was a perfect product already yes we added a second pool and but anything COVID related, the Pentas was already designed almost for. You know, it's complete privacy. You walk in your own entrance, basically from the, the, your own uh, elevator. And you're, well, like I said, you're afraid of germs. You can have the four seasons come up and clean five times a day. You can open all the doors and you can live outside, which we all want to do. And it's, you have everything at your fingertips right there. So you don't actually ever have to leave your uh, Panthas, if you don't want to, you can have the food catered and all the things we talked about. So there wasn't really too much to change from that perspective. But I let Louise answer for the rest of the building. Well, no, I would have to say that Frederick is absolutely right. I think, uh, I think that we are selling, marketing, and talking to people in a digital format has been very successful, actually. And I think it's going to be the wave of the future, not only for showing a property, but for, for actually the purchase of a property. I think there are gonna be a lot more online sales and sales strategies. Well, I know you guys are very busy. Um, Kobe, congratulations um, as being from South Florida must be a real, it must be exciting as an entrepreneur to be part of something so amazing because this is going to change Fort Lauderdale, as you said. I mean, for Luis and Frederick's team, getting 2,000 a square foot is uh, amazing for Fort Lauderdale. So it's really great um, to hear also from Fernando of him building the beautiful landscape of the property. To, before we uh, finish, Luis, you, 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 I mean, you're the architect of the dream team. Is there anything you wanted to add? Um, I just, I would like to add that I hope that our country becomes more stable and can deal with its challenges in a better way because it will have a very positive effect on real estate. Great. 
Frederick, anything you would like to leave off or Kobe? Or no, I just want to send some kisses. Wait, where's the camera? Hey, you guys didn't kiss today, Luis. Maybe you guys have, like, I mean. <laughs> Luis, where's your lips? Show me. <laughs> well, again, I gotta go. I, I gotta go, everybody. But love, love all of you guys, and thanks to everybody who's listening. You know, it's amazing. Thank you, Four Seasons Fort Lauderdale, too. Yes. And to Dana. And, uh, uh.